Greetings in the name of the Lord. This is Jim from Don'tPerish.com and John 424 Radio. Hope you're having a wonderful day. It is a frigid sub-zero day here in central Wisconsin. Hope you're staying warm. Hope you are enjoying this day the Lord has made. You know, we at Don'tPerish.com are always striving to expose religious error, man-made error, and replace it with the truth for God's glory. And today's topic is one that we came across, and so we thought we would discuss it and expose it here using God's Word. And thankfully, we have a internet soapbox through our website in which to do this. Now, speaking of soapbox, today's topic, today's modern pulpit, is it biblical or man-made tradition? All right, now this is a topic we want to talk about. Um... The special weekly place where a specially hired, trained, called a pastor, we call them modern pastor, or if you're Roman Catholic, a priest, stands up and speaks down to people sitting idle in lines and lies of pews. Now, for the most part, he is the only one who gets to proclaim God's truth and speak about God's word and those issues from this raised wooden box. Um, I guess normally others in some places can speak there for announcements but in general it's a tightly controlled place known as the modern pulpit now we know many churchgoers who have lifted up this pulpit and this position of the modern pastor to great importance and that's why it really needs to be questions and questioned and tested to god's word we will often hear that the pulpit is responsible for preaching the truth, or the pulpit is the reason of the sad shape that America's in, or the pulpit is a place that we can call the nation back to God. Well, many people seemingly believe that this has the, the pulpit has some type of higher power, something that God greatly honors, something that is used special in his current New Testament body. Do they really believe that that's the only place that God speaks his truth from? Why is this? Well, it's a practiced, man-made practice tradition that came from the pagan Roman Catholicism system, and it was brought over by the Reformers into denominational evangelical mainstream religion today. So the question must be asked, is it a biblical ordained practice? And if not, where did this practice come from, this lifted up pulpit where men stand in and, and preach from, uh, exclusively special just for them? Now first, I want to share with you that there is only one scripture in all of God's holy word that talks about anything um, that resembles a pulpit. Now you will find this in the book of Nehemiah in the Old Testament. And this it says this, So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law, law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of men women and others who could understand and all the people listened intently to the book of the law Ezra the teacher of the law stood on a high wooden platform built for the occasion beside him stood Matthiah, Shema, Aniah, Uriah, Haika, Messiah and on his left were Padiah, Meshua, Melika, Hashem, Hashbanadan, Zechariah and Meshulam Ezra opened the book all the people could see him because he was standing above them, and as he opened it, the people all stood up. Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord, their faces to the ground. Okay, so that's from Nehemiah 8, and that is the only, as I said, scripture reference of any type of a platform from which a man of God proclaimed truth. So from this text we can see it clearly was a raised wooden structure where the prophet of God in this one occasion used to speak to a large number of people so they could all see and hear him. It had no high place of standing. It was not a institutional ordinance that God put in place. There was no power, prestige, or importance as the word of God was the focus in this event. That was the important fact, was the word of God was being proclaimed. Now, if God's holy word only has one lone reference to this raised up platform, where did the practice of having a pulpit in every religious body gathering come from? I need to step back and remind you there is no such example or practice in the biblical 
first century New Testament church that believers are to follow and model today that Christ ordained. So that's pretty important. Now, for the answer, let's look to some Christian history, shall we? Now, there was evidence that in the Jewish culture, they did use a form of a pulpit or a desk in their synagogue building over the centuries. Again, synagogues were not ordained by uh, God. They were created by man. This would make sense as they most likely got this reference from Nehemiah 8 and that we read about. What we must consider here is that it was not ordained of God to do so, but it became a man-made tradition. Keep that in mind. Very important. Keep in mind these are also the things of God, uh, things of God that He Himself ordained as biblically God, God, uh, biblical godly worship to Him and the synagogues. Okay, were done in the synagogues. We're not really of them. Now think about that. Keep in mind these are the things that God Himself ordained as biblical godly worship and service to Him, and synagogues were not one of them. So synagogues were made of man is what I'm trying to say, not ordained of God, and the pulpit is kind of the same uh, instance. Now we look at the tabernacle, it was like a portable tent ordained by God. We look at the temple, it was a stone building in Jerusalem ordained by God. We look at the New Testament church model established by Jesus Christ and his apostles ordained by God, and we see the born-again believer who is now the temple of the Holy Spirit and the priest unto God. Those are, are ordained by God. Now, anything done in addition to these things is just a creation and addition of man to be very leery of. Indeed, Jesus warned us in Mark 7 about ritual traditions, did he not? Now, how do we do this testing? Well, we go to our key verses, 1 Thess 5, 21, test everything. 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine everything. And by discerning and testing, we hope that we can come to the truth from God's Word, and that's what our site at don'tperish.com is all about. Now, moving on, since true followers of Christ are to model Him and the Apostles, we need to ask this. Did the first century believers use a pulpit at all in their gatherings? In our research, we could find no example of this anywhere at all. It is known that they met mostly house to house. They never constructed a special building in the true New Testament church, and they met wherever they could as they were often being persecuted and their faith was illegal at the time and they were being killed for their faith. And it seems clear that no pulpits were used as a practice in the first century church and this made them a house church, this made them a mobile church, and this made them the biblical church that Christ ordained and we want to cling to those facts. So now we verified that it was not taught in the Bible as a practice, it was used one time. It was not used by the early New Testament saints as a tradition either. So you would ask, where did it come from being practiced today? Well, to find the origins of the pulpit's widespread use, it appears we have to go into history outside of the Holy Scriptures and look beyond the first century church. Now, the first reference of the term pulpit appears in the first century Christian history. Uh, excuse me, it, it appears in post, that means after first century Christian history, in the writings of Cyprian about 250. And he said this, When this man, beloved brother, came to us in such um, condescension of the Lord, illustrated by the testimony and wonder of the very men who had persecuted him, what else behooved be done that except he should be placed on the pulpit, that is, the tribunal of the church, that resting on the loftiness of the high station and, uh, and resting on the high station. So we see here that in 250 we hear mention of a pulpit being used in the post first century Christian church. Now we know that at some point that men that came along after the apostles had been killed off they began to bring in many man-made false traditions and the pulpit was a tradition that they brought in that was not God ordained. Now many changes took place after Christ ordained the church, the apostles died off, and these changes they were not biblical. The early New Testament church was overseen by multiple elders, we see that all over the New Testament, you can read about that in Titus 1, but all men in the gathering were to use their gifts to teach, to reason, to come together. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 26 tells us that. It was an open participatory gathering, not with one special platform for one special man to control the body. That's very important. The modern pastor role, controlling the body, is not biblical. Go to our um, don'tperish.com, look at our blog list, go to our discernment library, and look up 
our um, teachings about modern pastors, they are not in a biblical role, all right? Now, centuries later, brought many falsehoods into the church, like the lifted up leadership of bishops, and then the Roman Catholic faith took over after the Roman uh, Const Roman pagan uh, Emperor Constantine legalized Christianity, and he put priests in place, and that later became the modern pastor through the Reformation, one man to control the entire body, and that began to usurp the power over the people that they call laity, which is not biblical. There is no clergy laity. Everyone's on the same level. And Jesus spoke totally against this in Matthew 20, right? And this is what he says in Matthew 20 to his disciples. You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you be your slave. And even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So that's very important. True men of God serve the body of Christ. They don't usurp power. They don't stand in a lifted up box and get lifted up status. This is the whole point. Um, we see that Christ did not teach that way. The apostles did not teach that way. And so it's important that we are clear on that. Now these men were using um, a raised up unbiblical positions of power today. The Back in that day, the pulpit became the tool they used for lifting themselves up and overseeing the people, controlling the masses before them, again, against what Christ was teaching. They took away man's God-given right to, and his ability to speak openly in gatherings and reason in the word and train themselves up and made them only spectators in pews. Then, not long after Cyprian lived, we know that, the, as I spoke about, the pagan Roman Emperor Constantine legalized Christianity, and again, we see and we teach this all over our website, he brought in many pagan unbiblical traditions into the gatherings and lives of those who claim Christ. He gathered people into pagan buildings. He uh, created the priesthood again. He sat people idle in pews like in the dead pagan religions. He did ritual services. Now, the entire New Testament was a house church structure. It was tossed out all right, with close, intimate, in your home, accountability, men all teaching each other. It was all tossed out and overhauled by these pagan men and they brought in this pulpit mindset. The large ornate religious buildings and man-made systems of faith now created a control system and they rejected what Christ ordained for his New Testament body. So that's really how your denominations, evangelicalism, Roman Catholicism, and uh, the, uh, that's how they've all become very perverted because men have began to control them against God's will. Right? And sadly, so much of this remains today and that's what we strive to expose as false man-made religion. The Catholic faith was born in this move and for a thousand years they controlled the truth of God in what's called the Dark Ages and it held a death grip on God's word, hiding it from people. And their unbiblical priests ruled over the people from pulpits and that grew and grew into more control where people became afraid of the leaders of God rather than them being servants. Do you understand that? Now, also realize that multi-millions of people were killed, most of them burned alive at the stake, who retracted or pulled back from the system and dared challenge the Roman papacy. So you have to understand how this pulpit system was used to bat as a battering ram to force people to submit and they were killed if they didn't go along with it and the pulpit is one part of it buildings one modern CEO pastor reinstituting the tithe sitting people in pews I hope you see the picture it's not of God now we need to stop and note here that Jesus Christ died to do away with all those special Old Testament priesthood system. In fact, he died to make all those that are born in him priests themselves. You can read about that in 1 Peter 2 where he says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen and amen. So there's no need for the priest today. There's no need for a lording over modern pastor any longer. The pr and the praise goes to our high priest, Jesus Christ, that set us free from that system. And we want that for so many other people. Now, as we said, for thousands of years, the pagan Roman system ruled and used the unbiblical lifted up pulpit as it grew its control 
evil control over people that just sat idle in the pews. They thought of themselves as a special lifted up class of clergy holy men, but God did away with all that in Christ, so they were in great error. This is total disobedience to God. There was much corruption in their ways, and over the centuries it continued till about the year 1500 when a monk, Roman Catholic monk named Martin Luther, came along. Now, he decided to call out the Roman Catholic faith for some of its many unbiblical heretical teachings, and um, they were using those teachings to control people from the pulpits. Now, he rejected the indulgence, the selling, and forgiveness of sins. It was the main contention Martin Luther had. And the Protestant Reformation was born, and thousands of the error-filled dominant denominations come from that system today. So while good came out of the Reformation, there's also a lot of unbiblical ways that Martin Luther brought out. He was a very unbiblical man. He was a murderous man. Go to our don'tperish.com site. Look on exposing denominations and evangelicalism. He was a murderous man. He hated the Jews. And that's a topic for another time, but test that out. So he brought many false ways out of the Reformation, and the pulpit was one of them. Instead of giving people back the biblical freedom of the true New Testament church that Paul spoke about, as I said in 1 Corinthians 14.26, where he said this, How is it then, brethren, when you come together, and every one of you have the psalm, have the doctrine, have the tongue, have the revelation, have the interpretation, let all things be done unto edifying. The truth is, these false unbiblical reformers like Luther and Calvin, Calvin was also a unbiblical, baby-baptizing, murderous man. We have that on our page as well, our website. You can read about that. They left the Roman faith and they started up their own flawed religious system using much of Rome's ill ways to do what? Control people. They installed a modern pastor ruling over people versus the priest. They kept the control and they used the pulpit as a battering ram and a way to control the people who now were told to just sit in pews and listen to some trained religious man. This is a lie and it is Satan's tool to destroy people and control and have a counterfeit church, basically. Satan always wants to have a counterfeit of God, and that's his counterfeit church. We call them, the Roman Catholic system is the whore system because it's very unbiblical, and we believe Revelation 17 and the whole book of Revelation speaks about a, Babylon, a Babylonian-type whore system. We believe that's the Roman Catholic faith, and then... Out of that came the daughters of the whore, which is all the denominations that you see today. So that sounds bold, but biblically we can back it up because they're not following God's word. You're either a pure, true bride or you're a harlot bride. Which one are you if you're not following the true New Testament church? Very good question, isn't it? So Luther kept the ornate buildings, the pews, the flawed doctrines like baby baptism, and the priest became the modern pastor. To this day, that's why you have a paid man standing up over you in a lifted box in religious places and religious fancy buildings all over the world. I hope that you see that because that's really important. We need to bring down that system so that people can then be raised up and then they can see the truth. It was not ordained of God nor the example for his true New Testament church. It is pagan and it is false and the reformers used it again just as the Roman Catholics did, and they actually even persecuted people and burned them at the stake who went against them. So you need to know these things so you can see through Roman Catholicism, the Reformation, and then see through that system that was left in place today. Now, we would take this moment to say that today's hireling lording over modern pastors will often take their physical effort to th remove us from their buildings and for what you would ask, well, all we do is ask to have a separate meeting with them. And when we have a separate meeting with them, not interrupting their services, we tell them that they have no biblical standing to rule from this pulpit and ask them to show us in God's word. We show them their sin. We show them their unbiblical system. Ask them why they're not holding to the full word of God and why they're deceiving people from the pews. They have no biblical answers, and so they show us the door and tell us we're not welcome there. Many times the sinners, the idolaters, the adulterers are allowed to sit in the pews and they throw people out that want biblical truth. That's quite interesting and Jesus warned us about that. So they have power that rests on these men. They believe they do and it's only given them to them by these man's vain traditions, not by God's word. Now think about that. The pulpit today is only given power because of man-made traditions and the people sitting there allowing it 
it's not in God's word for one man to control the entire system. People sit there and allow it by putting their money in the plate, putting their time, supporting that system. It's against God's word and ways. We know that there should be biblical elders to make sure that everything that's done and said is true to the word. Oh, we agree with that. See Titus 1, 1 Timothy 3. But these men are never to silence other men or to take power in the pulpit, take total control as they've done to teach false man-made traditions. This is not of God, so we expose it. We call them false teachers and hirelings. Now, they surely can teach many things, all right? But do they teach them biblically? The body needs to and should hear from many men. All right? Now think about that. These men could teach biblically if they wanted to, but they don't. They're deceivers. And many men could step up and teach various things that have different strengths and skills of other people, other men. But what do you get? You get the flavoring, we say, of one man. And that's not what Christ wants. He wants all the men to be the flavoring of the body, to give the fullness of the teaching and the wisdom that God has given each man according to his gifts. Doesn't that make sense? If you have a hundred men in the body, a hundred men should be adding to everyone's wisdom and input and teaching rather than one man. Because if the one man teaches and he's got perverted, weak doctrine, you're all going to have perverted weak doctrine. And there's no one there to catch him most times, and that's very, very unbiblical. So have you noticed that Nehemiah 8 spoke out about the prophet reading the word of God from sunrise to noon? That's about six hours in Jewish time. But today's modern pastors love to hold to that and say, oh, we saw the Nehemiah 8 had the pulpit. Do they preach and read God's word for six hours long? And are they prophets called of God. See, this is the thing. They pick and choose scriptures to make their positions stand up, and their positions don't stand up, all right? They like their 30 to 45 minute sermons, then they're done and out of there. This is not biblical, all right? When they are picking and choosing what to model, and not modeling the true New Testament church that God ordained, well, this becomes, they have, proves that they have very ill motives, and you need to test them, and run from them if they won't reject those false ways, repent, and get in line with God's word. So, in the end, the unbiblical pulpit practice as it is known today, does it really have devastating effects on people and bodies that endure them weekly? Well, first, let's think of the, let's think of the ramifications of this. It has killed millions of men's spirituality as they sit in pews, not growing, watching ritual timed out weekly shows, not using their gifts, not being really accountable, not being active in the body, and not being spirit led. Today, a, pain, a trained, hired, paid man, a modern pastor, is doing all the work for them so they can sit, listen, and go home. Now, we realize many men and women want it that way, okay? But that is not what is God's true New Testament church. This is not God's plan at all. Read your New Testament Bible, folks. Read, study the first century church. I speak to people all the time, and I can't believe how people do not study and know what the first century church looked like. That would be like me wanting to be an engineer or a doctor, and I never studied to be an engineer or a doctor. How can you know what God wants you to do in the first century New Testament church if you've never studied it for yourself and you're following a false man-made imposter? You need to ask yourself that. Are you truly of God? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands, keep my ways, John fourteen fifteen. Hebrews 5, 9 says, he made the way for those who obey him. You don't obey him by going off and following man-made tradition. So again, please read your Bible. Our website, don'tperish.com, will help you expose many, many errors. Another terrible example or effect, I should say, on a body is teaching, discernment, and wisdom, as we said, all come from one man. Uh, we needed to, to restate that. If you sit and listen to one man, you're all infected by that one man versus many men speaking who can correct each other and give you the fullness of God's truth from a body. That's the whole reason that men come together with their families, women and children, so the men can teach and reason and bring the fullness of God's truth together, not just sit and listen to one hired man. Biblical elders, yes, yes modern pastors of today from a lifted up pulpit, no. Now, go to don'tperish.com and click on Test Your Faith, and there's a 10-point biblical test that you can take to test your faith, and we hope you'll take that test today. Lastly, perhaps worst of all, God is being dishonored and sinned against as his church model that Christ left us has been perverted so men can lift themselves up in a false pulpit 
for their own gain maybe financial and pride and certainly glory because they like to lift themselves up as a special clergy class when it's not found in God's word. So we want to be clear on this last point. If a body wanted to have a raised up pulpit so that everyone could see and hear their, all their speakers, that's not the real issue here. We don't have a problem with that, neither does God's word. But that pulpit or place that the body gathers should be open for all men to step up and reason and go to the word. All right, there's the difference. The closed, controlled, modern pulpit where only one or two men are allowed to speak, speak truth is a falsity and it should be a open pulpit. Now, we don't feel you need a pulpit because if you're in a true New Testament church setting, you should be able to speak freely face to face one to another. Smaller groups work better. This is the the New Testament model. So we can guarantee you that modern pastors that we have met, they're terrified to ever let someone like me come speak at their modern pulpit because I will tell people the truth and love and call them out. They can't have that or allow that because they need to lie to people in the pews, and this is true. I challenge modern pastors all the time to come on my John 4.24 radio and sit and reason with me in God's word. Unedited, they can rebuke me, they can test me. I have no takers yet. So if you know of a modern pastor, go to our contact info, have him call me. would love to sit down and do a John 4.24 radio session with them and reason in the word. Most of them run and hide in the dark, all right? Very interesting. Now, I lovingly reach out to these people. We lovingly reach out to the people in the pews. In most cases, it's not accepted as it would ruin okay, their system, their paid gig that they've worked hard to build up, which is just another unbiblical area and topic that we'll cover at another time, the unbiblical paid positions today of the modern pastor. So if you study the New Testament, New Testament body and its functions, it is nothing like the man-made counterfeit system today with the lifted up, closed, controlled pulpit. Just as a family does not need a special lift, lifted up wooden box for its members to speak to each other in love. Could you imagine a dad if he built a box and set it in the middle of the living room and said, I'm going to stand on this box and speak down to all you all, but no one else can speak from this box. This is foolishness, all right? He should be on the level with his family and be an example and a servant so they'll want to mirror his example like Christ did for us. Doesn't that make sense? It really does. Go to our website and click on um, characteristics of the New Testament body under test your faith and you'll see what a New Testament body really looked like. Jesus told us to worship in spirit and truth, John 4 24. Paul told us to hold fast to the traditions he gave us, 2 Thessalonians 2 15. Are you doing that today? Or are you walking in man-made error? It was corrupt man that took this simple wooden structure that was used to lift up a prophet of God to proclaim the word of God, all right? It was that, it's the corrupt man that took that structure and he turned it into a power tool to steal God's design for his body so now that man can speak and tell relevant jokes and be worldly and be carnal and talk about NFL football rather than totally proclaiming the holy word of God as we see example for six hours we need to remind you all right now in Matthew 7 Jesus said this many will say to me on that day Lord Lord did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform miracles then I will tell them plainly I never knew you away from me lawless ones lawless ones means you're not following God's word very important Mark 7, he says, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain, and their teachings are merely human traditions. Are you following these human man-made traditions today? The modern, lifted-up, controlled pulpit where you sit and listen? Hmm, good question, I think. Now, those verses are a clear warning about, uh, to everyone, including people like us, like we used to be false converts, and people sitting in man-made religious ways. The pulpit was not part of the New Testament tradition. It's of man. It's for his purposes. It's decided to, it was decided to be put there for control. It was not used for the sole proclamation of God's word. It's not used for that today. It's used for control and tradition. And we want people to come out of that and do better for God, for his glory, and for their own spiritual well-being. Now we hope this article has taught you that a lifted up controlled pulpit is not part of God's body. It's been perverted and we want you to test all things that are going on inside that religious system that you are using and practicing today. What does your body practice today? Is it fully biblical ways or is it all these ways handed down by the pagan Romans and by the um, 
unbiblical reformers over the centuries. Now, go to don'tperish.com, go to our blog page, click on our blog library, and look up articles like Seminary Trained Men Are Unbiblical, or The Unbiblical Modern Pastor Role, or Denominational uh, Systems Are Unbiblical, or, as we said, characteristics of the true New Testament church, and compare those, will you, as a litmus test against your current body. The modern pulpit will fall away as a falsehood, as, as well as many of the other things you are practicing there today. So, I hope this message has been an important one for you. I hope it teaches you to test those things that are going on throw out that controlled pulpit, get into the true New Testament church setting, which is men and families coming together, reasoning over God's word, proclaiming God's word, testing each other, not one man to stand in a lifted up box and act like he is special or above everyone else. Go to don'tperish.com. Our website is loaded with information you won't get at any other modern religious place or through these modern hireling pastors. Thanks for listening. Hope to come back to you again next time with more truth and discernment from God's word. Until I do, remember, rejecting all a man's false ways, clinging only to the truth of God's word. Go out and have a great day. Until next time, may God be praised.